Hey, what's up? It's Mike from 424recording.com, the internet's busiest four-track nerd, coming at you with another video on how to set the level correctly on your Tascam 424 Mark III cassette recorder. So the 424, and I guess basically any four-track, is basically just a mixer. I've said this a couple times. It's a mixer section and a tape section. Today we're going to be looking primarily at the mixer section because obviously that's where you set your level. So first off, obviously you want to have the input over at mic line. Secondly, the manual states that you want to have your each one of these channel faders within the seven to eight range and they have it nicely uh, shaded here so that you realize that. Also the master has a, the master fader has a shaded region as well. In general, um, that's where you're going to want to have the channel volume up. But let's take a look at this in, in a way that maybe will make more sense to the flow of signal coming into the machine. The trim knob is basically the preamp knob um, that's going to be set. If you have a line level signal that can boost or raise the volume of that signal um, by turning it to the is that right, I guess clockwise. And then if you have a mic level signal, generally that's going to be louder. So you, you might want to turn the preamp down going to the left. And that's how this trim knob is actually set up. Um, it used to confuse me because I didn't realize why it had line on one side of the trim knob and mic on the other, but it actually makes a lot of sense if you keep it at noon and think about it like this. So if you have a mic level signal, since that's gonna be louder, you would wanna primarily be using it to the uh, counterclockwise or left position, turning it down. So if you think about it like that, it's almost a reverse um, volume knob uh, for when you have a mic level signal. So that's why mic is on the right side. Conversely, if you have a line level signal, you will be turning the knob to the right by raising the volume of the signal because generally that's going to be a lower signal. With the line level signal, when you turn the knob to the right, you're adding volume. And that's how that knob is set up. So it's kind of going the proper way. You think about a volume knob, it's going to be, you're going to be raising the volume by going clockwise or to the right. If you have a mic level signal, it's, it, the knob is worked the opposite way. So that's why line is on the left and mic is on the right. At least that's why I think it is. I, I, I don't know. That's, that's my explanation to myself. So hopefully that's the way it is, but it makes sense. So your mileage may vary. Your mileage may vary. Next up. So the signal, when you plug something in, it obviously comes into the four track um, through one, through either a mic line input or a XLR input. So the signal comes in here and then you adjust the preamp here. If your signal is too low, you, pull up, you bump it. If it's too much, you bump it down, uh, you cut it. So depending on what your signal is, that's going to determine how you're going to set the trim knob. Obviously, you can also just hear this when you're, um, if you have your headphones on or have, are monitoring your signal, you will hear that it's getting louder if you put it to the right and, and lower if you put it to the left. And just depending on your signal, once again, line or mic, that's what's gonna be determined what you set your trim at. Uh, in the last video, we took a look at um, distorting this preamp and adding a, a gratuitous amount of volume to it. You know, that could be cool if that's what you wanna do. If it's not, then you wanna set your level properly. How do you know what a proper volume is? It's a good question. When you have your instrument hooked up, or whatever you're using hooked up, when you go to the meters here, these meters go up to plus six dB. Um, and generally when you're using tape, you wanna hit it a little bit harder to get some of that tape goodness, tape saturation, tape distortion, tape compression. So in general, when I'm setting the level for something, I try to aim for, I talked about this in the other video as well, Try to aim for RMS at three and peaks not peaking above six. And that usually leaves enough room, headroom for other tracks on my tape. Again, depending on how you like the sound of it, if you want it to sound completely fuzzed out, crank the trim, you have a line level signal, crank the trim, distort that preamp, you're gonna have the channel fader at about seven or eight, the master at about seven or eight, and then this is going to be, I would go as loud as you can without it cascading into another channel. So the signal's coming in from the top. So here you have the ch first chance to have some pre-amplification. That's really going to determine whether it's distorting, whether it's whether the level is loud enough, 
and com uh, loud enough to combat the hiss of the tape because that's another thing. If a lot of people with the tape, they want to have the level loud enough so that the hiss of the cassette is not as prevalent. And to do that, you just need a good signal to noise ratio. And what that means is you just got to record loud enough so that the tape hiss is sort of masked by the volume of what you recorded. Well, as the signal comes in, you have this chance with the trim knob to adjust the preamp. And also with the EQ, you can do that as well, which I kind of did in the other video once again. I'll link that video in the description. And then obviously you can pan it and you can have the effects hooked up. This is setting the overall volume of the channel, while the trim is simply setting the volume of the signal. So no matter what this sounds like, if this is fuzzing out like crazy, so you had it like up and this was too loud, uh, you could simply just lower this down. So if you lowered it down in that case, you'd still have it really fuzzed out, but just at a lower volume. Conversely, if this is too low of a signal and it's very clean sounding and you want to bump it, you could, you could hypothetically bump this up to get a louder clean signal before it starts distorting or if you just like the sound at that level without hitting the preamp is hard but generally and the manual i think states like and that's why these are shaded out like this between seven and eight because that's the preferred volume the master is basically the summation of these channels the overall volume of them at the end of the mixer path well i hope that helps in setting the level if you have any questions hit me up, 424recording at gmail.com, or leave a comment below. As always, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel, you nerd. Godspeed, my friend. Now go out there and have some fun setting your level correctly. But remember, there's no correct way to do anything when it comes to recording. Just do what you want, find a sound you like, it's all up to you. Don't get too worked up with the specifics.